Hi, I'm heading towards the 2016 Sydney Maker Fair once again at the awesome Powerhouse Museum. Let's go check it out. I'm just wandering from the car park. I think I see it. Hang on. I think I see it. There it is. Woohoo! And there's the back entry. Let's see if we can sneak in, huh? Let's go. Everything's under construction here. Hmm, Sydney. Ah, oh, well, it's a nice day for it though. Check it out. Gorgeous. And it's only 8.30, so they're not open yet, but there's the J car guys. They're unpacking, offloading. And there's Daniel. No, I'm Daniel. <laughs> There's Daniel. Good day, Daniel. Good to see you. Mate. I was hey, like, hey, what's with it? Yeah, seeing, seeing, like, I was expecting a whole setup, you know, an entire exoskeleton and everything. Yeah, yeah. And exoskeleton but, for my um, knee and everything. I, I have the battle damage. Yeah, you've got the battle damage. And the battle damage. Ah, what'd you do? Of, yeah, the lifetime of poor posture. Yeah, yeah. Poor posture. And poor posture. And somebody helped by hitting me with a car six years ago. Ah, wonderful. It's a good uh. story. But um, not it, this. Yeah, you know, like I can. I'm, I'm okay, guys. He's okay. He's okay. He can still run Maker Fair. It's all right. And we've got two halls today. Yeah. So unlike last year, to answer your question yep. from yesterday, so we don't have the, the the touring hall this year. We've actually mm -hmm. got our, our big exhibition from the Science Museum in London, our Collider, which is in there. Uh, so we're back to our kind of regular configuration of being spread across the museum. Uh, mainly in the powerhouse learning center on level two and in the turbine <laughs> hall and transport hall level one. So cool. It's nicely clustered together. All right, we're going to have fun. Day. Now, he did promise me there was a lanyard with my name on it, but uh, it must be written in invisible ink. Anyway, good thing is I can label it myself, call myself anything I want. I don't know, Lord Czar, EEV blog. Hmm, I suspect they have some assembling to do. Hmm, <laughs> they've got a lot of wooden stuff. <laughs> better hurry, come on. They're still making their signs on the spot. And let's sneak in the back entrance. Here we go. Well, it says museum entrance, but it is actually the back entrance. And the Sydney Science Festival is on. I definitely want to uh, visit some stuff. There's some very cool stuff happening at the Sydney Science Festival. The Maker Fair, of course, is uh, part of it. There we go, Sydney Mini Maker Fair. It's still a mini. It's still a mini. Ooh, it's a nice chandelier. Anyway, let's go check it out. We're in the Turbine Hall, yet again. The awesome Turbine Hall with the planes and uh, there's a few people setting up. Let's go check it out. Yes, yes to all. We've been saying this for years. Yes. Uh, evening vlog. Gav! Hey guys. I'll be back. <laughs> and. Are we inside? Yes, we are inside here. This is where they're going to have the talks. And ta-da! More space stuff, as you've seen last time. It's still here. I think I took you on a tour of that last time. Alright, lots of unpacking to be done over there. Check it out. James, <laughs> uh, so you're from the makerspace? Uh, yes. Oh, are they, I'm sorry, the robots space. and dinosaurs? Yeah. Yep, with Gav, there he is. Hello. Everyone knows Gav. Mm. And look what James gave me for a teardown. A seek thermal camera for Android. Seek thermal camera if it focuses. No, poor if video blogging here. Anyway, it is a seek thermal camera for Androids. Awesome. And what's wrong with the data pin? Uh, the data minus pin on the Androids. Um, well, the PCB itself yep. is just gone. So it's gone, blue. I, I tried to get it working, but I just couldn't. So, yeah. All right. Thank so, you very so much. Tear down time. <laughs> and to prove that Gav has no life, where he's <laughs> no sorry, <laughs> no no. He found these. He found extruded aluminium. Tell us, yeah, extruded yeah. aluminium. I, 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 there was uh, on eBay. It was like 300 kilos of extruded aluminium in Melbourne, <laughs> and it was like. It was a fifth of the price that you normally pay for it. So we drove to Melbourne yeah, to get it. We got we rented a van, drove down to Melbourne, <laughs> cut the six metre lengths into two metres to fit in the van. We're racing the rain because like we can't saw in the rain. The saw is overheating, so we like cut, 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 break, break, cut, 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 break. Loaded it all up, and then I, I, I made more of my uh, tool shelving. 
which I have posted a yes. link to. You've got a blog on how to build them. Yes, I, I yep. presume that a link is going to hover over the text right now. It, it will hover yeah. over the text. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I think I can do that. I think I can do third-party links. James's 3D printer. Yeah, I'm just wiring up the LEDs on the front. Yep. And the case. The oh, sexy case it went mm, in. Can't can't show out. you. It's too pornographic. So <laughs> not safe for work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nice work. Mm. So this is, whole thing. Is, so yeah. is that your own design or? Uh, the printer, no, I bought this from Hobby King. But yep. the modifications, the Pi Zero, the web connectivity, steel nozzle, heated bed, that's all. That's all yours. All modifications. And, right. Nice yeah. work. And look who I ran into, fellow blogger Mick. Oh, hang on, poor video blogging. There's light behind you. Oh. There you go, <laughs> Mick from Mick Make. Yes. Tell us about your channel. Uh, well, look, my channel is a fairly small channel. It's only just started up recently. I'm trying to get uh, electronics into the market as much as possible. So uh, for the person who's starting out, uh, who doesn't know very much about electronics, that's the sort of person I'm aiming at. So I'm trying to get it very, very sort of uh, condensed and easy to learn and so anyone can pick it up. Awesome, and you've got like 30 odd videos up now? Yeah, 30 odd videos, yeah, yeah. Um, I've, do, I've put up mostly reviews, um, but also do sort of how-tos, um, mainly how-tos on, uh, for example, my, my one of my last videos was uh, how to build a learner driver assist braking system. Nice! <laughs> Which is built from a, an old set of scales, um, Arduino, and uh, an audio amplifier. Cool, we'll Some link people... in your channel down below. Oh yeah, thanks very much Dave. Check it out. And Mick has a 360 degree camera and you're going to get a ton of footage from this. So if you want some real show footage, check out Mick's video on his side, I'll link it in. Absolutely. And there's Maddie from Little Bird. Marcus is coming tomorrow. That's right, yeah. He is. And they got the sand thing back. Awesome. Well, the sand's not in there yet. No, the sand's in there. Oh, it's, oh it is in there. Oh, okay, but you didn't fill it up because it's real expensive <laughs> stuff. So, I yeah. Still build quite high tower, oh, so okay. All good. Cool. All right. So, let's head on up and see where the. Uh, there's Robbie the robot. There we go. And let's head on up. Ooh, we've got these weird and wacky things hanging from the roof. But let's. Uh, Oh, I probably shouldn't be walking up these escalators with the knee and here we go and we're on this level and maybe the one up anyway let's go in and see if the Apple one is still here shall we why not Getting some stock footage. Where's the Apple One? Where's the Apple One? Oh. There it is. There's a Mac. Apple Two. A mouse. Look, it's a mouse. And there it is. Hallelujah. The Apple One. Woohoo! Look at that. Beautiful in a custom briefcase got an external tranny there and a cassette tape brilliant wonder if it still works I really have to uh, do a separate video on this but I've said that several times haven't I hmm so the original owner of course has put it into a briefcase and uh, but that is an original Apple one I don't know what's it worth half a million bucks something like that if you put it up to auction today it would be highly sought after there's not many of them left but that is an original apple one you can guarantee it and there you go classic double-sided layout all the traces on the top going horizontal and all the traces on the bottom you can bet your bottom dollar would be going vertical well, most of them anyway. Woohoo! Apple One. And bonus points if you can name what this is. Check out what I found. Analog computer. EAI 680. 
It was originally uh, part of ANSTO, which is our uh, nuclear laboratory um, from the university, with well, modules from the University of Queensland, but uh, check it out. All analog computer goodness for you analog computer aficionados. Fantastic, look at the patch panel, wow. Wow, that's impressive. And I'd love to open it for you and look at the some analog control goodness down in there, but it's all palleted up. And uh, I don't know why. Um, anyway, oh, nothing interesting on the back. Bummer. I think it's going into an exhibit, perhaps, or is it already here? Because it's surrounded by some weird stuff. A few uh, outfit aficionados. I <laughs> anyway, it's going to be in here again this year. So it is. Oh. Yeah. They're setting up. So 3D printers and. Other jazz. Yeah. Just slowly getting through it. And it's just opened and then comes the queue. It looks like Bitscope have teamed up with Element 14. There's their Bitscope rack we saw last time. BWD doesn't get any better than that. 40 Made years old. In 40, is that all? Yeah, that one's 40 years old. Oh, lots of older ones. Yeah? Made in Australia. Beauty. Osbury Group? Good. And the Innovators Club. Good day. Oh, UAV. Look at that. That's uh, seen. It's got a few battle scars. And that's Create New South Wales, Uni of New South Wales. And the Electric Vehicle Association is here again with their EVs that we've seen in previous years. Cute. <laughs> Air power t-shirt! Winning shirt. I'm at Makerspace and Co and one of their makers, who isn't here today, has made this. Um, do they have a name, I guess, Mono Wheel or something? And uh, there you go. Brilliant. wonder how practical they are in terms of riding. I don't know. Looks fun though. You've seen Ian before. Ian runs Diffusion Radio. And if you haven't subscribed to his podcast, do so. And he's got, he's into plants. Tell us about them. So these are insect eating carnivorous plants. And we have sticky plants and pitfall traps and snap traps. So we've got butterworts over here that are sticky. And you can see the insects stuck to the leaves. The little black spots are little right. midges. Yep. We've got a different sort of sticky one over here. This is a king sundew, Drosera regia. Are these Australian? Gesundheit. No. Uh, this is not Australian, but Where I do is have some. Where from? I think this one's actually from Britain. So the leaf actually bends on these ones as it actually wraps itself it around can, them. It can wrap itself around them. These are the North American style ones, but they're also tropical ones over yep. here. This yes. is the, the tropical ones. And they're both pitfall traps right. of different types. So that's got a waxy lip so and everything. So what it is, is these ones over here, the Sarancenia, these have downward pointing hairs that the insects will follow. Yes. They've got nectar on the lip there. Yes. So the insects will feed on the nectar and then they go into waxy, slippery areas. They Oops. fall in. Yep. There's water inside and they drown in drown. the water. It, the water's more wet than regular water. It's got extra enzymes in there yep. and it digests them. These ones are sticky in the same way. I'm here with Anthony from the Uni of New South Wales, and which is the maker group, right? The create group. Yep. And they're all here. Uh, anyway, he's going to tell us about this UAV. So this is our entrance to the UAV Outback Challenge. Um, unfortunately, it's been covered in duct tape because we had a bit of an accident last Tuesday. Oops. Um, <laughs> bit do, of a bad landing. <laughs> do tell. Yeah. Look at the uh, look at the prop there. So yeah. we just kind of. Got the duct tape out, put it back together for today. <laughs> Beautifully bodged, I like it. It can still fly, no worries. Oh, pretty sure it can still fly. Yep. So um, the concept is a um, quad plane. So um, 
vertical takeoff and landing mm -hmm. and also forward flight. So the vertical takeoff and landing will allow us to, get, uh, to land the plane in confined areas mm -hmm. and forward flights for the long distance pretty much. It's so running on a two-stroke motor and the electric motors run on large, quite large lipos. Right. Is there any interference here between the, excuse my lack of aerodynamic knowledge, but um, airflow between the ones that the two the two rotors here and the main and the main prop. Surprisingly, a... surprisingly um, with when the airplane does fly, the um, the back motors actually uh, the back rotors actually line up straight. Right. And there's like literally very little interference. Oh, okay. What an interesting thing that right. we found. We were quite worried about it um, creating a lot of turbulence. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for our case, it just lined up perfectly. Brilliant. Yeah, so All right, and it worked. Yeah. Get it back in the air. She'll be right. It'll it'll fly with duct tape, and the, the, the one wing's a bit crooked, but uh, well, you can compensate for that in flight. That's it. <laughs> cool. No worries. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'm here with Lorenz. He's from the Uni in New South, and he's got something really cool to show us. Tell us about this, Lorenz. So this is a Belova Accutron watch. Belova being the manufacturer. Yeah. Made in the. United States in the 60s. The first electronic watch. Early or late 60s? Uh, I think it's 64. So 64, early. and this is an original. Original, yeah. And one of the first, or the first watch manufactured with a transistor. Wow. In what package, I wonder, was the transistor back then? Can we physically you see, can it? see it? It's just. Uh... You can see it under there. Sorry, I can't get any closer to this. I might try and take a macro photo, but uh, to include. Yeah. But this is original and you've had it restored and yeah. it uses a tuning fork? Yep, so there's a tuning fork that runs the length of the watch yeah. uh, driven by uh, two coils in an oscillating circuit which drives it very, I think it's at around 50 hertz so that you get that very smooth sweep. Nice! That is beautiful! And are these rare or what? Uh, I'm not sure. There's, there's a few of them hanging around. It's right. quite hard to get one working. Okay, and, and does it have a, like a, it, was this like, are there different models or is this like so the one original model? Originally these were produced as a skeleton version to see the mechanism as a demo in watch shops. Oh, and right, it would originally okay. have a face. Oh, okay, so it, it'd have a face over yeah. everything, but it's much sexier without yeah, the yeah. face. So a lot of yeah. these, I'm not sure if this was originally a face one, but a lot of conversions have happened. Right. To wow. the me mechanism. That is fantastic. So, where do I get one? <laughs> Can I hunt for one on eBay? eBay. Yeah, that's, right. That's where it came um, from. Now, okay, you've got it on eBay. Yep. Nice work. Thanks, Lorenz. That's brilliant.